I would beg and steal. It's all good, let's get a bit more blue. That bird's certainly enjoying himself by the sound of it. I think that's about right. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Just keyed down foreground and the light source becomes the actual sky. Really interesting subject in themselves, just the way they reflect into the water. So you've got the beautiful colour of the bank, which contrasts the water itself, but then you get that soft reflection. thought then I was going to be digging myself out but we got through. That is a nasty little bog hole. This area here has actually been closed, this campsite I'm at has been closed because there's been floods for the last few months in this area. Recently they've reopened it because the water's gone down but the river's there and there and this is basically a crossing and what's going to happen is uh, of course the crossing's been wet for months so there's not much bottom. It's very deep so you've just got to Give it a bit of momentum, I guess. Anyway, got through. Fantastic. All right, let's get out of here. All right, well this looks like a great spot if you ask me. Fantastic stuff. Got the big gum trees, got the creek in flood, got the bird life, everything.
Doesn't get much better, does it? All right, let's roll that out. I'm just gonna have a basic, a basic camp tonight. Nothing too flash. Just roll the swag out right by the water's edge. Hopefully the tide doesn't come in. That one there, nice. Okay. If you ever go, darling, I'll be home, oh, so lonely, I'll be sad and blue, crying over you, dear only, I would beg and steal, just to feel. your heart beating close to mine so close to mine if you ever go darling I'll be oh, oh so lonely begging on my knees and all I ask is please please love me
Well, that was an interesting little piece. Just a nice, quick little, uh, just a nice, quick little painting. Uh, bit of a cloud bank again on the horizon. So I only got a few seconds of spearing bright light. Most of it was a little bit whatever. The sun's gotten up over that cloud now, and so now we're getting beautiful sunlight. But the only problem is now we've lost all that morning first light that only lasts like five minutes, whatever. That real golden, as soon as the sun comes over the horizon, just boom. So it was there for a couple of seconds. I anticipated it. I built up all the... Uh, the colours in the sky and the water, beautiful reflections, hoping that I'd get that little burst of colour and I got it and managed to get it in before it all went away again. So, pretty happy and uh, a cup of tea time now, I reckon. Nothing like the smell of red gum burning, river red gum. It is a beautiful smell. Absolutely my favourite, I would say. Favourite wood to burn. Just a beautiful smell. Beautiful tree to paint, obviously. Got fantastic character, those old river red gums. And the timber when it's burning is absolutely beautiful. Especially if it's a little bit green, because when it's a bit green, you get kind of a sappy, steamy smoke coming out the end. And that sappy, steamy smoke's even better than the, the burning smoke. Fantastic stuff. Now the fun part, working out what to paint for the midday painting. Sport for choice, a little bit here, but at the same time, that bird life. Yeah, at the same time, I'm probably going to do a gum tree, but these banks on the other side are really, really interesting subject in themselves just the way they reflect into the water so you've got the beautiful color of the bank which contrasts the water itself but then you get that soft reflection of that bank in the water and you can really play with those subtle knife marks so either way i think it will be good A little bit of high level cloud around, but hopefully most of that will be out of the way through the midday. The sun will poke through nicely, I would imagine. All right, well, we're set up now. We've got a big linen, stretched linen. Now, it looks like it's got no primer on it, but it's got three clear coats. So it's got the uh, original, original colour of the Belgian linen itself. And, of course, tons of oil paint and palette knives. Now, we've got these beautiful big gum trees up here, so that'll be a great subject. Can hardly wait to get into this one. Unfortunately, like I was talking about earlier, the cloud bank on the horizon has come over. So we're going to be working, well it's not necessarily unfortunate, it just means we're going to be working with more of a light overcast day, so the colour choices I'll choose will be different than if I was just working in the full sun. Should be interesting. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so now as you can see, I've already put a sketch in. I just, because it's quite a complicated little thing, I just wanted to make sure I had everything in the right spot. So I feel I've pretty much got what I want. So let's just start by putting a few darks in, right? I'll go for some cobalt blue. 
alizarin crimson and burnt sienna makes a nice fairly neutral dark Just put some of those in right now, and uh, because it's half mixed, you get little flecks of red, flecks of brown, flecks of blue, all the colours that it's made out of. You get all of them, which creates a bit of interest. Feel my way around. Now that's the majority of the darks in. We'll paint over a lot of them later. It's easier to put the darks in first with oil. Okay, now I'll just stand back and make sure I've got that correct. All right, what to do next? Well, that sky, that high level cloud is coming over more and more. There's a little bit of blue sky left just in there as you can see, so I think we'll get that in. Maybe get that in first. What we, let's have a look. What are we gonna do? A bit of cobalt blue, yellow ochre, and white. I'll just knock in the lower part of the horizon area. So it's a slight, got a slight green twang with that uh, little bit of yellow ochre and I find down low on the horizon that you quite often get that. Cobalt blue yellow ochre. Let's just have a look. Yeah. Mm. I'm leaving patches obviously because it's going to be foliage as well there. So. All right, let's just go up a notch. We'll go blue, cobalt blue and white. So there's a bit less yellow ochre. A branch through there, so hang on, that's that goes like that. That branch is there, that one will shoot up this way. The branch is going every which way today. Alright, let's go a bit more blue. That bird's certainly enjoying himself by the sound of it. Gonna go out. That one's there, right? So that'll go in there. Okay. Now that big tree's there. Where am I? Getting lost in amongst all these branches. That's that branch there. So, just got to concentrate for a minute to make sure I get all these blues in the right spot. <laughs> I think that's about right. Let's just go a little bit higher, a bit more blue and magenta now. We'll mix it up with a bit of a red blue, magenta right in the works instead of the yellow ochre. And we'll get those blues in, I know they're gonna go, so I wanna get them in pretty quick smart. I can already see them going. Those birds are absolutely loving it. Okay, so I'll 
throw that in there. Nice and neat there, wind her up a bit. Wind her up a little. Nice it. Alright. Before we go any further, stick a little bit of blues in here. Neutral sort of colour, so I'll use the cobalt blue and the burnt sienna to make it fairly neutral for now. Yeah, right, now I'm gonna make it. Because I'm choosing an overcast day, I'm gonna be putting this foreground in fairly low key to start with. And if I need to lighten it, I'll lighten her up later, but I just want to get that low key. So I'll go for some magentas and browns, yellow ochre. Bit of that sky blue thrown in, and that sky blue in amongst all those will grey it off because it's the opposite on the colour wheel. We'll get a key down type of colour. Just as I say that, then the sun goes and comes out now, doesn't it? Doesn't matter. We'll start off with a subdued tone, like I said. A bit more yellow ochre in that. Start off with a subdued tone. And then I'll lighten her up if I need to put some sunlight in. A bit of yellow ochre, a bit of brown, a bit of blue, magenta. Just a generalised key down. That's a little bit greener and that's good because we want variety. There's a bit of green there as well, so I'll put that in. Good variety. There we go. Alright. Let's just have a look. Yes, very good now. Itself is going to be quite a dark tone today, so we'll go for the burnt siennas and blues and whatever again. Not as black as whatever, there's going to be a bit of white to lighten the value up. Not as dark as the darkest dark, but I want to start it off fairly dark, like so. A bit of variety in the colours, a bit more yellow ochre going on here. I notice yellow ochre and burnt sienna, a bit of white. The sun's out, but like I said, because it's going to go, come and go, I want to have it fairly subdued and then just add bits of light as I go. Darken off with a bit of magentas and blues and browns down at the base here. It's quite a dark tonal family just there. This is fun, eh? Something different. It's always something different. Here we go. Colors here thrown in. Like I said the light's going and come out like you wouldn't believe now, but we won't worry about that. We'll stick with this key down version first. Don't see any yellow ochre and white. needs a little bit of red, hang on. Alright, let's just 
throw that red in. There we go, nice stuff. That'll work well. Getting paint all over me already. <laughs> all right, now, a little bit of red. I might actually get some of that cat orange. I just want to make it a really warm bit of light just here. Yep, that's warm. <laughs> Kill that down. There we go. Put them in like so, good variety of marks. and pieces. Right, oh, that one can be that way. Right. Branches going every different way. Quite a complicated little thing. Palette knife. Dark blue version, what do we got? A bit darker here, you see? And then over here we have... Where's that going to live about there? Not like that. Alright. Alright, what are we going to do next? Let me have a look. Some green foliage. Yellow ochre, hoodie and green, burnt sienna, some lighter colours. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, a bit of white thrown in to lighten her up. A bit more burnt sienna. Bit of blue and magenta just to grey it off a little. Just trying to grey it off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just put them in where it feels good. Tack a bit here. We just got to get some dark tonal values in over here for some foliage. The shadows of the trees in here. A little bit of blue. Oh, hang on. Blue. Brown. Trying to create a lot of dark value here. A bit of green. Shadows there. Alright, well the sun seems to be out so we'll go with that. Let's just keep going with that. White, yellow ochre, burnt sienna. We'll get some lighter tones in, some sunlight tones in before things too. What have we got? Fish jumping out of the water. <laughs> That's white, burnt sienna, yellow ochre with a little bit of blue and stuff. Just greying it off a little bit. Yeah. Okay. We're going to need... Put that in there, eh? Put that in 
Benzene and yellow ochre just keying it off a little bit, a little bit darker because it's going to be the reflection in the water just a bit keyed down compared to the main brightness of its. So good, now mix that with some of these greens. So I've got that yellow ochre sand colour, mixing it with some of those greens. Just trying to get some of that water colour in. So there we go, kind of an olive green colour. Seems about correct. Grasses and whatever just along here. There's a little bit of red in that, believe it or not. That's why I like painting on location. You see subtle colours, there's a little bit of subtle reds and whatever in the grasses on the other side. high key reds, so I get that with a bit of white as well, almost like a pink. I'm really trying to pull those subtle colours up if I see them in nature, just bring them up. Alright, got a million things on the go at once here. Let's just go white, a bit of yellow over. I want a really high key colour here. Look in some of these high level clouds that are chuffing around. Mix up a little bit of blue and white, a bit of magenta, make a kind of subtle grey sort of light tone. Plenty of white just on the horizon down in here where those subtle greens are. Then starts to go to subtle greys as it gets even lower. Clean that off. going, we're in, game on. Just cleaning that water up like that. 
cooling down and getting that water beautiful and porcelainic, absolutely smooth. Pulling through. Wiping the knife clean each time, really emphasizing the downward marks to get the feeling of that reflective water. That's looking right, that's looking right. Those birds are certainly noisy. They just don't seem to want to stop. Why would you, I guess? Such a beautiful day. Just adding bits and pieces here and there. All right, let's get some change tack. Let's go from some pure white. We're recording, good. A little bit of yellow ochre. Pure white, maybe a tiny bit of that orange thing in. This is lit up, let's just light this up, shall we? A bit more yellow ochre. Light the bits up that we see. More yellow ochre, orange. Yellow ochre, orange and white. More yellow ochre, and orange. Wipe that clean. Little bits of light hitting there and there. Light and shadow. There we go. Oh, stand back and analyze, eh? Right, we just keep moving around. Yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and white. Getting the light and shadow that's going on here. Well, oh, hang on, hang on, clean that one up. There's more like it. I'm glad the sun's come out again to tell you the truth. I'm happy about that. All right, so we're constantly moving around, just getting everything in because it's such a big painting and there's always so much to do. So I've gone for yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and viridian green. It's gonna go darker than that, so a little bit more of the viridian greens and burnt siennas. Fairly low key color. I just wanna continue with this 
some of the shadowy bits of the uh, foliage up there. Not too much foliage, just a little bit up here and there, up in the blue heavens. Slightly let the knife dance around here and there. Get uh, some burnt siennas and cat orange. Just want to paint some of that sap that bleeds out of the tree. You get the kind of sap bleeding out of the tree and it sends things a beautiful orangey. Burnt sienna type colour. Uh, we'll stick that in for sure. Establish that edge there, give that bit of reflected light coming in. There's some nice reflected light over here too. It's actually slightly sky blue, this reflected light, so I'll just stick that in. All well and good, let's just go for a bit of white. Just knock in a few of the brighter highlights. We really want it to pop and sing. Little bits here, little bits there. Pulling through with the knife, hang on. There's always something, a bit of blue and magenta. Just gonna knock in. Some of the cooler, cooler tones that I also see in there. It's warm and cool contrast. Now we seem to be working with a lot of uh, light and shadows. It's not going to be too much of an overcast day, which is great. But it means I've actually got to alter and put a few darker shadows in here because I didn't actually stick them in before. So we'll go for some blue and magentas and browns, just low key colours. Right, well, I might leave it at that. I could keep on going, but I feel like I've got what I set out to do. I'm actually happy about what's happened with the weather. The sun managed to hang around. Just at the end here, a couple of blue shadows started kicking in as the afternoon moved on a bit. So they've got the beautiful shadows out on the water there from the trees and they go a nice blue color. Play was warm and cool. I like the highlights on the tree, the flow, the reflections in the water. On the whole, I think I'm pretty happy with what's going on. Let's get that camera off, come in and have a look. All right, thank you.
All right. Got a nice log on here. Nice big log. Time to get the evening meal on. So what I'm going to do is just preheat the oven a little bit and uh, I might have some spuds and a bit of pumpkin and whatever. Bit of a roast tonight I reckon. Should be good. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Look. Just break them up a little bit more so we get a little bit uh, of surface area with the, uh, with the olive oil. Plenty of heat there. Let's just put a bit of oil in. That'll do. Now, get the spuds. Here we go. That's the heat I want. That sounds good. Some nice massive wedges. Look at that, beautiful stuff. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Turn around a bit. I might get some uh, pumpkin on, I reckon. Try a bit of pumpkin in there. Okay. Big slabs. Wedges of pumpkin now. Look at that, wedges of pumpkin. Put that over there. Take that off. Yeah, it is hot. It's hot. Sounds yummy though. Get a bit of oil over them. Now, the lid can go back on. Let's put that lid back on. And what I'll do is I might take them off to the side. Listen to that. Doesn't that sound delicious? We've got some good coals here. Grab a few of them. Flip them there. Now, maybe a couple more. Okay, okay. Let's get those off. That is heavy. That is heavy. from above. Couple more. Couple more for luck. All right, so you can hear that sounds delicious. That is plenty of heat there. Now, I preheated the oven and uh, got them fried up and whatever else. Now, I'll just sit there and slowly bake like in an oven back at home, but only yummier because you've got the smell of the campfire or whatever. Delicious, okay, cannot wait. Last night, last night, I camped out by the water, and that was great, I have to say. Being right by the water, I could literally hear fish jumping out of the water and whatever else. I 
this jumping out of the water and it was all great but at the same time there was a few gum trees overhead like branches they were not quite overhead but they were almost and it kept me awake at night i tell you why because those blinking limbs they can be like growing for like two years to a hundred years and any time they want whenever they decide they'll just drop a massive limb and uh kept me awake at night i wasn't directly under it but i wasn't far from it and the wind started to come up and i thought oh no right okay so tonight i'm right up here all right that'll do it the reason i've stuck that under base is there's so much so much cropped off weeds and whatever underneath it's all kind of rough so we want it to keep it nice and smooth don't we oh the princess and the pea and all that so we've got to have it lovely nice and flat that looks pretty good i reckon we'll go with that Just put a couple of pegs in and we're back in the game what was that Wow, that ground's soft. Let's get out there, eh? There's a beautiful sundown going on. We don't want to muck around about it. Got the spuds on and whatever, but we've also got to get some footage, don't we? Oh, this is good. This is what I'm talking about now. Just turn you around so you can see what I'm looking at. Now look at that, eh? Look at that sundown. Isn't that just like the best? ever oh fish jumping out of the water again I just love it out here I really do and why wouldn't you with that sort of stuff behind you fish jumping out of the water beautiful sunny days a little bit overcast sometimes but that only adds to the sunset doesn't it so yeah, great stuff I don't know if you've noticed, but in all my shots, that bird has been almost everything. Beep, 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 beep. For whatever reason, it's cranking. Not a noise going on there. Anyway, so then we'll just go for an evening stroll before supper. Look at that. Oh, so strong. The reason I'm going this way is so you guys can see it. Every now and then I'll have a look myself, but it's just, <laughs> it's just wow factor. It's beautiful. I reckon there is some rain coming in. Maybe that's why we've got such a good sunset with that cloud cover. But you know what? I don't really mind. I reckon every day is a good day and so I might move camp tomorrow and if, it, if I get rained in well I get rained in that'll be fun in itself won't it got a half moon I went for a paddle last night seriously pitch black but the moon was out I had my fire cranking so I knew where I was, my bearings, and I just went out in the pitch black, except for the moonlight. And tranquil water, not a breath of wind, the water was like glass. And just cruising along at night with the moon, the moonlight, no wind and the serenity is just unbelievable. It's just so tranquil, it's like 
well, I don't know if I have to explain, but it's just, <laughs> it's just fantastic stuff, isn't it? All right, must be time to turn around, I reckon. It's getting dark and late now. I just checked that uh, stuff and it's all beautiful and soft and cooked. What I might do is just bang a bit of coals around. Just turn up the oven again for a minute. Just to get a bit of goldness about it. It's all there, it's all lovely. But at the same time, a little bit of goldness might not hurt anyone. So. Let's put it back on the flame. There we go, look at that. All right, so that'll heat up pretty quick. Just get a bit of buzz about it, and then we'll get stuck into it. What a fantastic day it's been, hasn't it? It's been great. Hang on. Yep, there you go, I can hear it. She's starting. She's starting up. Right. All right, so we'll let that buzz around for a bit and uh, just get a bit of goldness. And then, cut the munchy munchy time. Yeah, it's been a great day. I think I'll move on, make a new base camp just down the road. Get stuck into a new location tomorrow, so. Can't wait for that. Don't get me wrong, this is a beautiful spot as well. It doesn't get much better. But, it's always good to have variety. All right, let's get that lid off. Get stuck into it, eh? All right, what have we got here? Yeah, big chunks. Big chunks of roast loveliness. Beautiful. Man, that. I wish we had smell of vision because that is off the heezy. That is just insane. You can hear it sizzling. Oh, wow, that's beautiful stuff. Today, when it was going to be, I thought it was going to be overcast when I started the painting, I was actually a little bit excited about that. It's like, well, all right, let's paint, let's paint a plain air overcast day. That'll be something good, different. And then the sun went and came out, so that didn't happen. But I'll tell you what, I reckon it's going to happen in the next day or two. It's going to become overcast, so... I think, I think I'll be doing that. I think I'll be painting an overcast painting. There's a different sort of light. This keyed down foreground and the light source becomes the actual sky rather than the sun. The light source becomes the sky itself. And everything becomes almost like a silhouette. Like the trees are almost like a silhouette. Oh jeez, it's getting blank and hot. That fire's cranking now. The trees and everything become a silhouette, so the foreground's low key, the trees are kind of keyed down like a silhouette, and the sky is high key. And if you do that, you actually get a lot of light in an overcast day. It's amazing how you can get the feeling of light on an overcast day by doing that. This is getting hot, I'm gonna to have to move back. She's getting a little, little bit too much. A little bit too much pleasantness. There we go, just back her off a bit. Less better. All right, I think that'll be good. Mm. That's cooled down a bit. Now I can actually taste it. <laughs> mm. Good stuff. Look at that fire. 